Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. Today is April 1st, so it's about time to film my finished pages for the month of March. If I've counted correctly, I've done 14 pictures, so I will dive straight in. I'm going to grab my little notebook because um, my memory is not the best and if I want to take a sneak peek for the materials that I've used I will need it right beside me. So the first one I did in March was in Magical Dawn by Hannah Carlson and I wanted to play around with some gesso to see how the page reacted and this is the result. I like this mouse very much. The gesso uh, gives the, um, the ink tents um, more of a floating way than the paper normally would give it. And um, it turned out quite nice for the mouse, but I don't like it as much for my mushrooms, like here I have some stripes that are quite good visible and uh, overall I'm not too fond of the result of this page. Um, I don't like the colors that I've chosen. I do like the purple ones, but I don't like these ones. And But I'm very happy with my mouse and I did use some um, Pentel Sparkle Pop pens for the key, but it's not showing up with this light. Um, I love working with these uh, sparkle pens, they are fantastic. Uh, plus they were a gift and I appreciated that gift very much. And um, so it's, it's double the pleasure to know that someone has supported me and it's a fantastic product to work with. So it was uh, nice to use it on this page. So, in love with my mouse, but the mushrooms, mm. So, that was the first one. To put it on the floor. The second one I've done in a Chinese coloring book. I don't know what the uh, English translation is, uh, but it's one with some mythical figures. So, on this side, you get a little image with a saying, I think this is kind of a, an icy queen or I don't know. It's, it's something to do with freezing, I think so. And the lady that I did had something to do with a wolf. And this is how she turned out. And I'm going to look I don't know if I can find a flashlight. I'm going to pause for a second and take a look if I can find a flashlight because here I've used gold paints and it's not visible, um, the shimmer at all. So I will be back in one second. Okay, here we are again and I found my flashlight and I hope it will show the use of paint. So there's detail on her face, on her um other body parts like her shoulder she has some oops that's a bit too much on her face and i've put some golden details in her hair also so i was very very pleased with how she turned out and for her um clothing it was a base layer with paints i think and um, I went on top with pencil and added some pearlescent uh, watercolor paint, but from my discount shop Action, not the Paul Rubens one, because I, di I did use more shimmery details on her hair and the face. And this had to look more muted or less vibrant. Um, going to take a look which... I have the Brutfuner pencil, so the um, Wan Shui or Guangui, they are also called like that. Um, 
so that's what I've used to shade in her clothing and I love my moon that's the oops I have to do some magic to make it it's not the easiest manners but it's a Kuretake pearlescent um, starry colors and now that I have my flashlight I can show you the pentel sparkle pop on my little mousy friend and I hope it will pop look at that key don't you just love it super nice and I did put some stickles on the mushrooms to make them more of my liking so that were those two books for the third one and by the way um, March was for me a month to color in books that I didn't touch for quite some time so and I've succeeded quite well I think um, I did color a Hannah Lynn picture quite recently I think but it was a long time since I've grabbed my princesses and storybook darlings uh, book and so I decided to do the princess and the frog. Um, I did look up a um, picture of a sun set, I think it was. And I really like the outcome. And of course, I've used some starry colors also. And I think I saw the finished pages of KP Colors and she made it a crystal ball, but I remember me reading a story as a kid where a princess was playing with a golden ball and that the frog took it when it fell into this uh, well, I think it's called. Um, and he only wanted to gift, it, uh, gift her the ball back after she kissed him. So I'm, that was my memory of it. So I've made my ball in gold. And she has some Kuretake starry colors on her dress also, but that's not popping up that good. There are some stickles on the water. The frog has a golden crown. And I've done the skin with um, color softs. I finally figured out the good, a good combo for me uh, for a pale skin. Um, the hair is intense only, the clothing, I have to take a sneak peek. Mm -hmm. Dress Neo 2. Neo 2 and I've shaded it with pencil and so to see, I think it's also a Derwent color soft. Yeah, I've used most of my color softs which were also a gift. So it's always nice to uh, that you can say to the one who's gifted something that you've made good use of it. I enjoyed this picture very much. It was a, a Derwent project. So Derwent Intense, Derwent Color Soft and some Kuretake and some Stickles. Very happy with this one. Then I grabbed a book that scared me for a while because I had a whip in here and it every time I looked at it I couldn't convince myself to work any further on that one and um, the past few weeks we were watching binge, binge watching in fact uh, season 8 of The Walking Dead and one of the main characters Michonne is one of my favorites um, and so I took my whip back and I based my girl on Michonne. And where is she? Here she is. And at first I had done, last year I think, the skin tone with the base of Albrecht Dürer, just light flesh. And so I went over her with darker tones. I'm going to look which... Um, which brand I've used? Brutfunner again. So the Huang Wei, Wang Shui, once again. I really like how her hair turned out. 
and I've added some snow. So in the background some snow, snow on the trees. These were painted, I think, with the Kuretake paint set. Yes, and um, the only shimmery part, I think, whoops, we're not at a disco. Okay, is um, the Paul Rubens glitter on her crown. I don't think I've used... Oh, yeah, I did. I've made um, the skeletons look a bit wet. So that it was like the snow was melting on their um, yeah, bones. And I really, really like my Michonne and it's... <laughs> yeah, zombies. Those aren't zombies, but... Maybe there were some time. And uh, yeah, I think I've used Inktense on the dress also. Yes, Sherry, the Sherry color. Really happy that I've picked this one up again. And uh, yeah, and I painted the border with gesso, I think, it's a black gesso, or it could be acrylic paint, I don't know. So very happy with this one. And then we have Fairy World, one of my favorite books by Barbara Lanza. I only have this one by Barbara Lanza, but it's quite a thick one and I, I like it very much. And I wanted to play around with my brush oil powders again, and so I did. And I did this one. And here I have to take a sneak peek because I, do, I think I've um, worked with markers. Yes, I've based with markers, but what did I use on top? Polychromos, yeah, Polychromos pencils. And she has some shimmer too, and this is not shining too bright. So she has some, mm, what did I use? I can't figure it out, Paul Rubens, I think. And also for her torch. And I've used uh, Sparkle Pops again for details on the torch and on her belt. And I really like... It was a very simple picture. It's only the, the flying woman. But with the brush oil powders it became more interesting, I think. So it was very nice to work on her. And I decided to keep her dress quite plain. And yeah. Very happy with this outcome. Okay. Then another book that I hadn't touched in quite a while. And also a brush oil powders used on the back on the bottom and on the top. Here I've used ink tents because it was too risky to play with the powders so close nearby. Um, the skin is done with color soft pencils. Um, hair also. And what did I use on the? Um, I think this was Durban Graffiti tint, if I'm not mistaken. And, but I didn't like how her fins turned out, so I've added a lot of... Here we go again. Sorry. I've had it, added a lot of stickles. And some I think I've used pearlescent paints, shimmery, for those waves here and around her body. But... Um, and I don't like my fish either, but considering the special effect that I wanted to create, I think they suit quite well. And I really like how her skin worked out. And I lo love the crab. That's also color soft. I love the gradation in his shield or shell. So also a nice project to work on, but... Daunting page. It was a few, but 
I'm happy with it. And my books are full. Okay. Then we have the Fedorable Minis. And this was a Watch Me Color video that I did on camera. Where is she? Was this girl? And I'm going to check that it's not flashing again. No. And we've used some special paints and some glitter again. Of course, graphite in for most of the coloring, except the skin. Um, and a very simple soft pastel background. If you want to watch how I color this and you um, already haven't, it's available, I think it's three or four parts. So if you want, you can rewatch that. And then we are going to take a look at my most beloved picture of the month that I did from the Lunar Chronicles coloring book. Um, I did Princess Winter. Now I haven't read the young adult book series. Only I've only read Cinder part one. Um, so I don't know how Princess Winter is looking. So if she's not matching the books, the, the reading, the, the novels, I'm sorry, but yeah, I've colored her in like I've, I saw her before me and I'm super happy. I love how her skin turned out and I'm going to take a look. What did I use? For her face, Prismacolor pencils. So I'm, I'm so happy with how I did the light because I, uh, on, on, on profile face, it's super hard to do, I think. And I wanted to make her very pure. So I didn't exaggerate with some color combos in her hair. I've used brown, a reddish and black together. Because I thought that would suit her. And I've kept her clothing really in pastel. Um, in pastel colors. And I'm going to... Okay. And so she has stickles, of course. Spectrum Noir Clear Glitter. Paul Rubens. Kuretake Gold or Paul Rubens Gold. I'm not remembering that one that much. But I really like the effect. If you look straight at her, this um, yeah, extra touch isn't visible. But if you play with the page, everything pops up. So I'm very, very happy with how she turned out. And the, the snowflakes have some stickles. So, yeah, it's, um, I, it, see, once I've colored her, I couldn't believe I did this. <laughs> so um, super proud of how she turned out. And the border, I'm going to take a look. It's neo color too, just quite plain. I always start with my background because that works best for me and uh, in the inner circle, I didn't go in with neos, then I did graphite tint. It was almost the same color, but a bit lighter, but it had the same warmth than this one. So, uh, yeah, super proud of this one. And then I did another Selena Fennec book. This was an old other story. I didn't like, I don't like this very much. Um, I like the hair and the, the lions. I did, I think, Albrecht Dürer or Intense. I have to take a look again. Albrecht Dürer. Yes. Albrecht Dürer. And I did the shading, I think, with polychromos. Mm. And graffiti and pencils. But yeah, not too fond of this one. She has some gold details and the pink on her dress is uh, the Pentanel Dual Hybrid Pens. 
that were also gifted like those very much too and i think the inner part of the flowers is also the dual hybrids so overall it's not that bad but yeah after my princess winter this was wow <laughs> and now i'm going to stop this video and start recording a new one because soon my camera will switch off so we will back in just one second so the next one is in Mermaids and Other Sea Creatures by Camilla Derrico and the Brusho fever was already there and so I've played with them. <laughs> and at first I thought, oh no, what have I done? But I didn't give up and I've built my picture around the background as I usually do. And this is the result. It's very colorful, but somehow it, in my feeling or for my feeling, it matches, matches together. So I did use, I think, Prismacolor pencils. I have to take a look. There is some marker base. Oops, sorry. Some marker base everywhere and shading with poly, uh, no, Prismacolors, Prismacolor pencils. And I don't know, yes, I've used stickles, so I have to turn on that flashlight again to make it more visible. So here you can see all the shimmery. She has some Paul Rubens on the shelves on her head. And yeah, so what started as a disaster turned out quite okay. And I didn't use gesso because otherwise I wouldn't have had bleed through. But since it was the beginning of the book, it wasn't that bad. And I don't think I've smudged anywhere else. No, I have a bit of here, a bit of smudging here, but it hasn't contaminated other pages. So very happy with this one also. Next we have The Magical Journey by Lizzie Mary Cullum. I'm sorry if I'm out of bed because but I had to run downstairs to uh, repark my little car. Uh, whew. And I don't have z any condition. Zero. <sighs> okay, Magical Journey. Um, we went surfing. I had a lot of fun doing this picture. Where is it? Over here. I really enjoyed working on this one. Um, enjoyed using vivid colors. I started with the background as usual. Um, it really, really helps me to yeah, decide on all the other colors. So, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> The next time I'm, uh, I will be resting a bit because, hoo -hoo. <laughs> uh, but okay. Uh, yeah, first background, then the poppy flowers. Um, I love the ocean. Um, yeah, had a lot of fun with this one, and I don't think I've used. I did use a bit of. Um, Paul Rubens paint, but it's not that detailed, so it's not necessary to lift my um, torch again. So it was nice working in this book again, although the paper had some trouble. I have some mild bleed through here and there, here also a little bit, it's not that visible, but yeah, some of her books have strange paper. It, it reacts a bit strange. And I use water, but not in that amount that it could have any trouble, but still. But okay, overall, a very, 
vivid picture. Happy I did this one. And then I got my Sonnet watercolors in. I think I did it with Sonnet. Going to check before. Uh, oh no, I did get my Sonnet pa uh, paints in, but I decided to paint with the Kuritake ones instead. <laughs> Because I felt guilty that I had the Kuritake paints because I wanted them so bad. And I only used them once in my Rhapsody in the Forest, I think. My little mouse that was walking in the rain, his red jacket with white dots was done with Kuritake paint. And um, yeah, I wanted to use them again. So I had a terrible whip and I've messed it up even more bad but yeah okay it's my test page the back side doesn't have any um negative effect so i still can do this lovely bug but i've painted all of this and i don't like the colors that i've used on my bird but on the other hand it's quite sunny and light and cheerful and i like the gradation on his head on his little head and I'm quite happy with the leaves of these flowers too and he has a lot of stickles okay here he, here he is shimmering and I've used gold kuretake paint I think it's kuretake for the border Where am I looking? Kuretake gold. Yes, it's Kuretake. So, very happy with how this turned out. I like my watery stains over here. Really has a nice effect, I think. And it was super nice to work with watercolors only. And this page is still in perfect condition. I love the Hannah Carlson books. I prefer the Dutch version uh, for the paper, but the original one is also very good. Then I did on camera Rapunzel. This book is unfortunately not available anymore. I've looked for it, but yeah, you have a lot of these kind of uh, published books. There's also no mentioning of an artist. So it's, is it a grab together of different drawings and put together? I, I don't know, but yeah, it's a shame that it's not um, for sale anymore. But anyway, we did this on camera. And um, yeah, it was fun to work on her. Um, she has some gold details in her hair. Gold background, which we did with a stamp and gold ink. And she has a glittery washi tape around, which matches her clothing quite nicely. And um, since this picture was uh, printed diagonally a bit. I did use my black gesso here and on the border to make it match together. So I was very pleased with how it turned out. And the back page has bleed through, especially the purple stains. And also here beside her head. But I, if I want to color this picture in the future, I'm not sure yet. And you have also a bit of ghosting of that ink. I think I will gesso this page first because gesso camouflages a bit of the um, of, of black lines. And I think also stains, so I can try it out. But for now, it doesn't bother me. So if you want, if you haven't watched this series, you can uh, find it on my channel. It's four parts, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So that was this one. 
then I returned to the mermaids in paradise and here I've used my sonnet paints but um, I knew from my gnomes in the neighborhood book that this paper isn't quite friendly with water media um, and still I dived in with water media and I had a bit of trouble with the background but in the end it worked out quite nice um, very happy with the outcome I've used quite a lot of white signal my gel pen has uh, has lost a lot of ink um, but it was nice to do I love the effect and those two lovely birdie friends have some Paul Rubens on their feathers and she also has Paul Rubens more of a purplish uh, paint and the inner uh, circles of my flowers I have used some stickles for stars so that it would shimmer a bit if I played with the page and the inner side of these flowers, of the yellow flowers, is Pentel Sparkle Pop again. Because now it's orange, but if you move the page it becomes yellow. So I really love that effect. So it was perfect for this picture also. And the greenery beside my bird is also Paul Rubens paint to make it uh, more Poppier. It has a base layer of this. Did I use sonnet paint? No, I think I've used my cheap Chinese watercolor set as a base and uh, put a Paul Rubens on top of it. So, uh, yeah, very happy with those. And I think, I think I've used color softs again. Um, Mermaids in Paradise, here it is. Uh, ba -ba -bum. Yeah, blush pink. Yeah, I recognize the color names. Yeah, all um, color soft pencils. Yeah, so very happy with the outcome. Love the bright colors of the paints. The sonnet paints are, are really fantastic, but I did struggle with the paper and I had some stains here, but since it's one sided, it's not any problem and then the last book I've worked in in March was Peter Pan <coughs> sorry <coughs> was Peter Pan by um, Fabiana Atanasio and I decided to do a Wendy page and I ended up doing a double page spread or I saw it after I had already worked a lot on Wendy that the um, the ropes around her continued on the other page and so I thought okay, okay I will color them both this was a leftover from some paint so that I uh, it was acrylic paint that I've dotted around and maybe I will color him sooner or later but it's not necessary Ah, and I've smudged a bit here, but I was uh, planning on uh, doing something with black if I'm ever doing this page. So it's not a problem. So, and here's the double page spread. Um, I did do the background as the last element this time, and ooh, I learned that I really have to start with the background, although I didn't have any problem to dress her because I know her uh, nightgown is blue. But no, I have to start with the background. That really is settles my mind and, and yeah, makes it easier. So, and she's a base of um, Chinese watercolor paints. I think for her dress too. Going to take a look. Um, where have I? 
Yeah, I've used uh, the Chinese, my Chinese watercolor paint set, 48 colors, quite cheap, bought on AliExpress. And I've shaded her hair and her face. No, the face is only polychromos pencils. The shading of her hair, this was a base of paint with polychromos on top. And then I decided to grab my Mikador color rush pencils. Those pencils uh, were, I, I did windows by um, Pita Hewitt's channel. And I only colored with them once in a Jade Summer book. And I thought it's time to grab these again. And I had a lot of fun using them. I, I like how my wood turned out, uh, her nightgown. Um, yeah, I was very pleased with, uh, with the result. And I've used stickles on the pearl in the shell. The shell itself is Paul Rubens glitter paint with some Spectrum Noir clear glitter on top because I don't think that the Paul Rubens reacted quite good on the paint now. The shells here also have Paul Rubens on top. Um, Spectrum Noir on the top. Some stickly dots on the, yeah, how do you call these things? Corals, corals. And then for the Peter page, I did the same type of background. I'm going to show the glitter already. Paul Rubens on the green bottle, stickles on the coral, um, and pentel sparkle pop on his knife. So take a look at that shine, wow. And for his skin, um, I've used my new uh, discount pens, bought in action. I did a whole video for those uh, last week. And I mean, polychromos, cheap budget pencils. So if you want to, you really can achieve great results, of course. But that's with every pencil brand, the combo paper and pencil have to be a match because otherwise it's very hard. Um, I have some books where my Prisma colors are fighting with the paper and others work great and, and it's, it's unpredictable. But in the Fabiana Atanasio books, the budget, pencil, budget pencils worked great. So I did also use paints for the woodwork, um, for his hair, for the yeah, leaves on his chest, for his pants, and I shaded everything with those budget-friendly pencils. And I really like the outcome. And I think they look quite cute together. And I've added some white signal bubbles here and there to make it more playful. And... Uh, yeah, I'm very happy with uh, how they turned out, but um, I was almost crazy after working on these ropes. Oh boy, it was full. <laughs> I've, I've used um, graphite pencils on the rope as a base and then added in uh, regular pencils, so... Um, Polychromos, I, no, Mikador, the Mikador ones for this one, and the cheap budget pencils by Action for, or by Deco Time, I should say, for this rope. And oh, it was a lot of work and so boring. I was glad that my picture was finished, but I really like how his pants turned out. I've used the combo of some greens and uh, some browns, some reddish brown, or, yeah really like uh, his outfit. So, and that concludes my coloring month of March. In April, my aim is to give my uncolored books some attention. So, for my first project, I've grabbed my Coloring Heaven Hannah Lynn special, which was released quite um, recent. And... Um, I've chosen a picture to work on from um, the 15 exclusive ones that were put in the magazine. 
So for the first page in uh, for April, it will be a Hannah Lynn one. And um, yeah, I'm not sure which book will follow after uh, the Coloring Heaven uh, issue. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit scary, all those untouched books. Um, it's very difficult to, to choose something. Um, I'm not using a generator or something like that because I really must feel a picture before I dive in. And um, yeah, I, I really want to choose for myself. So, uh, but I'm sure, I hope it will work out. And if I'm feeling that it's going the wrong way, because I, if I lay too much pressure on myself to do a particular book and it's not working out, then I block. So if I'm feeling that I have to color something in a book that's already had some attention, yeah, so be it. It's it's only my uh, rule, so to speak. Um, so I can do whatever I want, but I will try my best to give my bought books that hadn't didn't have any attention at all since they got on my shelf a fair chance. So I'm going to say goodbye for now. Um, I hope we I can film another video soon. If you have any requests or questions, please leave a comment below or uh, send me an email. My email is in the description uh, under the video. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.